guys off the bench. That being Chuck Bailey and Ben Hummerickhouse, one of the starters, is out today for Evansville and Cincinnati without Aziz Bandego and C.J. Frederick. Jamil Reynolds into the starting lineup in Bandego's place and wins the tip for Cincinnati. We're underway in fifth third arena. Final non-conference game for both of these teams. Evansville coming off a win against Tennessee Tech. Cincinnati against Stetson. Inside feed to Lockin. And he banks it in over Hughes for the first bucket of the night. Now Cincinnati is facing this tonight. Thomas Hafner, Strawbridge, Toomey, and Hughes, the starting five for the Purple Aces. Good cut by Hughes, and a little bit of a wild shot there off the mark. And for the Bearcats, we mentioned without some of their key cogs in there, it's Thomas Newman, Reynolds, Lockin, and Lukosius rounding up the starting five. You got a one-on-one -on -one down low with either of the post guys. They're playing behind. Lukosius buries the triple. It's always a good sign for the Bearcats when they connect early from three. Lukosius missed the last game with a shoulder injury that was in part due to getting hit by a car earlier this season. Good backdoor cut. Hafner lays it in. Count that one in a foul. And Evansville is on the board on the good back cut by Cam Hafner. I mean, look at the backdoor cut. They're, they're playing almost look like Hoosiers out there. Caught John Newman sleeping. You won't find that very often, but they cashed in on that possession. Cam Hafner, six points, five assists, kind of a do-it-all guy for this Evansville team. The six and five, the last game against Tennessee Tech. He misses the three-point play opportunity. All right, Terry, your keys to the game will start with Cincinnati. Up for the Bearcats, it's attack, 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 attack offensively. Make sure you put pressure on their defense. Defensively, you got to attack and make sure that you get to those shooters and take them, make them one-dimensional, and then make them, oh my goodness. Does that qualify as attacking attack in Terry? the paint? That's the, my next key. Attack in the paint. Give it to Big Millie and let him do what he does. And for Evansville, you got to bob and weave. Bearcats are going to throw knockout punches. At least try to body blows, chin checkers. They're going to try to do different things and make sure that you are copacetic and you say who you are. They're going to contest. They're going to test you. So make sure you're ready. Well, that was nothing but twine there for Kenny Strawbridge. Knocking that in from three. I mean, bounds Evansville basketball. Look at this pass right. Newman to Millie. Jamil Reynolds goes up powerful. Doesn't like to shoot floaters. He likes to try to break the rim. Now Cincinnati still trying to get Jamil Reynolds rust off. He missed the first nine games of the season waiting his transfer waiver to clear. And with the national ruling that all two-time transfers would be immediately eligible, Reynolds has now played in four games, including tonight for Cincinnati. They're trying to shake some of that rust off, especially with the footwork. He's traveling a bit too much and some unforced turnovers for Cincinnati, but so far so good tonight. Here's Thomas working on Thomas, and not that time. That's Antonio Thomas for Evansville and Day Day Thomas for Cincinnati, who just flung his headband into the second row of seats. Tip pass, Lockin gives it away. Toomey is stripped. Out of bounds stays with Evansville. Coach didn't didn't like the turnover by Victor Locke, and he was trying to pass the ball down to Jamil Reynolds and hesitated at the last second, but he was pleased with Victor Locke and getting back on defense and not giving up a layup. Here's Strawbridge trying to back down Lukosius and knocks in the fallaway jumper. He's off to a good start. Nice feel. David Ragland didn't even talk about Strawbridge's scoring ability when we had a chance to talk with him yesterday. He said it's a great passer and a great defender, but he's made his first couple shots tonight. Newman has the answer for Cincinnati. Newman started out hot from three, shooting 33% from downtown. That is ninth three of the year and 25 tries. Hafner, long two. And Lukosius, the rebound. Newman weaving through traffic. Oh, come on. And the two. That elongated Euro step just slices through the double team, puts it up for a layup. A frantic pace right now. Evansville and Cincinnati trying to get down the floor. And Day Day Thomas, the team leader in steals, pilfers one there for Cincinnati. And he weaves through traffic at the other end. Lockin has the follow. Extra pass to Lukosius. And Toomey the miss. 
Yeah, Jamel Reynolds is going to have to understand he's got to get opposite side when that shot goes up from three on the left side. Get opposite side. He was in perfect rebound position if he was positioned there. Got to be careful around Dede Thomas. Yeah, he's a bona fide thief. To me, rattles one in for a bucket for Evansville. And that's what he's telling the guys with the ball. <laughs> Give the ball to me <laughs> and let me shoot this. Averaging 10.6 rebounds this year for the Purple Aces. Off the mark for Reynolds, tipped around towards the rim, and Hughes comes away with the miss. Evansville a chance to tie with a three. Antonio Thomas, one of those two-time transfers, began his career. Bradley, and then went to Kentucky Wesley, and he has that shot swatted out of bounds by Day Day Thomas. Jay New, with the crooked leg, step through, goes all the way through. Holiday magic is fleeting. Don't risk it to save a few cents. Trust Duracell. It's 4-2. And when they met in 2021, that was the first meeting since the 90s. Double team comes on Strawbridge, 10 to shoot for the Purple Aces. They don't even get a chance, out of bounds off of Antonio Thomas. Shot out of a cannon, the double team came with Jizzle James. But then all of a sudden you see Newman on the closeout. It was so fast, he startled the guy with the ball, knocked it off his leg. That's how you close out. Now the key for Newman is not wearing down over the course of a game. He guarded Jalen Blackman right. against Stetson and he did great for 32 minutes, the final eight. He was a little bit worn down, and that's when Stetson got within five in the second half. Cincinnati eventually held on for the win. Floater for Lockett off the mark. Skillings battles for the offensive rebound, tipped away, and it will stay with Cincinnati. Skillings finds the way, finds a way to get his hands on rebounds that should not be touched. I mean, he, can, he has incredible length, but timing, like he loves to mix it up in there. Exactly what Wes Miller said. He said he's an energizer, and if he's energized from the jump coming off the bench, the ball just seems to find him. Found him last game before the holiday break. 20 points. Look inside. A mismatch down there now. Instead, Lukosius takes it inside, and it's deflected away. Last touch by the Lithuanian. And yeah, part of that is Vic's fault because Victor Lockett must call for the ball with your hands your eyes and your mouth he was sort of looking with his hand in the air but he never got the attention of Seamoss the coaches Evansville a chance to take the lead Strawbridge has been the hot hand so far for Evansville hence the double team last possession he's made his first couple shots that's a lead for the purple aces oh and he put the hand down and say he's too small for me they're feeling good out here that's seven of the 13 points for Kenny Strawbridge Skip to Newman. Good close out by Hughes. And Newman finishes anyway. You can hear Wes Miller yell at his team saying, move. The ball's got to pop. Doesn't look like it was earlier in shoot around. They got to move and pop. Defensively, they got to scrap. A couple of 10 and 2 teams battling it out early in the first half. Hughes will try from three. He can shoot that. That one misses everything. But Hughes, despite six foot ten, he will shoot it from a good clip, 36% from deep this year. And they'll play loose, they'll play free. You know, you're down two players that are highly impactful for your team. So you're gonna go out there and the guys that need to score for you right now, you're gonna have to give them a little bit longer rope. A little bit of pressure here. Bob is in for Evansville, number zero in the long hair. Guarding Newman right now. Well, you gotta go to work. Not that time for Lockett, but there's Skillings Come again on. flying in. Sit oh, pass to Lockett and the two. Jay New three. John Newman the third. With the pocket pass, zips straight past several defenders into the hands of Victor Lockett, who with the sweet touch. That was impressive. Dribble handoff to Strawbridge, 10 to shoot. Good defense by Josh Reed, who's into the game for Cincinnati. Toomey oh, banks on. in the three. And he's laughing because he knows from that angle, the bank is closed that night. Even online banking won't even let you draw money out. Skilling's tough contested layup doesn't go. And Toomey the rebound. 
Seven points for Toomey. We're tied at 16. The Bearcats got to play. If they want to win this game, they're going to play with more energy than Evansville. Evansville is playing loose and free, and they're executing. So in order to play a team that is executing highly, you got to take something away from them, and you got to play with more energy. Well, this is an Evansville team that has tested itself in the non-conference. Not that time for Toomey. Bodies go down Newman and Toomey, both slow to get up at the other end. I think Newman got the worst of that one. Newman gets back in the play offensively. And does not get the bounce. Maybe a potential basket interference, but Skillings taps it in instead. Yeah, Skillings will take the basket, but it was a basket interference. No call from the officiating crew. Cincinnati bucket. And out of bounds. Leads us to a break. You said the pass was a pocket pass, Terry. He zipped it in there. John well, look, Newman, look at it. How sweet that pass is. Rotation now, love it, because they can get yeah. elongated minutes now, and they can give some of that production. Right now, the bench points are in favor of the Cats. Only two to zip. The points in the paint are what's really helping the Cats. They're up in that position 12 to 4. But just a two-point advantage for Cincinnati. Off the mark for Strawbridge as he hung in the air. Could knock it down, and Cincinnati tries to push. Got to move the ball. That's what you hear Coach yelling, Coach Wes Miller. There's Jizzle James. Good blow by. And cannot bank it in. Good contest at the rim by Sekou Kalei. Getting a little bit deeper for Evansville. Down a couple of key players tonight. Kalei has played in eight games. Now his ninth tonight. A fight through. Strawbridge has been the focal point offensively for the Purple Aces. Here's Cuff. Eight to shoot for Thomas. It's a good defensive possession so far by the Cats. Three to shoot. Wow, what a block. Second of the game for Thomas. That's going to be a fun matchup tonight. Antonio Thomas against Day Day Thomas. And so far, advantage Day Day. Off the mark from three for Day Day Thomas. Yeah, but that's Odio Guama's job. So Odio Guama's in the game to be the rebounder, weak side rebounder on the offensive end. Two times the ball goes to the opposite side, once on the layup that came off the rim, and once on an air ball. And he's got to be there to clean that up. That's his job while he's in the game. Evansville again getting very deep into the shot clock. Strawbridge doing everything he can. Good cut by Thomas. And fouls. A foul against Odia Guama. But that was a, the previous possession was such a good defensive possession by the Bearcats. And even this possession was good up until the handoff. And the low post defender has got to be there, which was Odia Guama, to make that adjustment. You're the rim protector, whether that's a shot block, whether that's a charge, or whether just making your presence felt and making them kick it out. You cannot have guards coming into the lane making layups. Antonio Thomas, 82% at the line this season. I mentioned earlier, two-time transfer began his career. Bradley, where he won an MVC title as a freshman, and went to Kentucky Wesleyan, averaged eight points per game last year. And now back in the MVC, where he is 10th, in the conference in free throw percentage entering tonight. So good guy to have at the line. 16 steals also. And more than one per game. One of the team leaders. Two of two at the line. And we're back to even at 18 again. I kind of love the fact that they come out pressing. A little three-quarter trap. Throwing it up to Reynolds here. Too far away from the basket for the alley-oop. James from the corner buries it. That's a three. Much improved three-point shooter, Jizzle James, with more confidence. He's a mid-ranger, but he can knock it down from long deep. 35% from long range this year for the freshman, Jizzle James. Cuff gets it to go. <laughs> what was that? Fake the pass. Yeah, half pass. It's like Vince Carter, half man, half amazing. Oh, Skillings flies in, and a blocking foul called. Had some wacky plays tonight, Terry. It has. The ball just slips around. Good pass by Day Day Thomas. Wasted no time. He gets back on defense, snaps it over to the corner. Jizzle James and Day Day Thomas playing together. It took several games for that to happen before Coach Wes Miller says, you know what? I need to start playing these two guys together because 
they're electric in practice. They go against each other in practice, and they go hard after, you know, trying to establish the point guard position. But when they play together, they complement each other so well because they both attack the basket, and they both can knock down the long ball. A part of it, too, Terry, is Skillings goes one of two at the line is Cincinnati's depth has been tested at various points. Sometimes it's forwards, sometimes it's guards. Lukosius has been out. Frederick has been out. Reynolds and Bandego awaited the transfer waivers. So they haven't had a set lineup really all season long. And as a result, the two guards have to play together by necessity at times. Oh, wow. It's an excellent through the legs dribble, and Thomas has it knocked away at the last second. Stays at this end, but Thomas tonight playing with a different sense of urgency out of the Christmas break. Well, he's got to realize. I mean, look at this. Good hand on it. Good block shot. Tanner Cuff. But Danny Thomas is one that, when he attacks the basket, it's with a purpose. When he only when he gets in troubles, when he's just dribbling around, probing and looking for something to do. But when he attacks the basket with a purpose, he's very effective because he can just jump past any defender that's trying to make a play on him. Lockett did not get it over Hughes, but Evansville could not secure the rebound. And that's something that David Ragland told us will play well in the shot clock for 25 seconds. It's capping off defensive possessions, going up, grabbing a rebound with two hands. They've struggled to finish off defensive stands. Really adamant about that, just closing down the possession and making sure that they get a good stop all the way through. Uh, David Thomas, normally he would take that shot. Instead, he tries to go on to me. And a foul called late. David yeah. Ragland could not believe that. It was the right call. Slapped him right on the arm. And because it was late, I guess the official on the side was waiting for the baseline official to make that call, Amy Bonner. I mean, he just attacks and goes downhill, goes past the defense, puts it up, and then you get slapped on the arm. I can understand if you're saying that's a late call, but better right being late than not making the call at all. And that foul was on Hafner on the reach, not on Toomey with the contest. And now with Cincinnati shooting some free throws over the last couple of possessions, it's worth noting this is not an area that Cincinnati thrives in. 11th in the Big 12 in free throw percentage, only 68.5%. And they've missed a couple so far tonight, just two of four. I mentioned that to Coach Wes Miller, and he said, you know, he's implemented more drills to try to put pressure on the team to make them in pressure situations. Almost a steal by Skillings, almost another one. At one, top of the one, three, one. Up high in the flush, Hughes grabbed it with one, threw it down with two. Yeah, when that ball goes to one side, Seamus the coach has got to drop. That's his responsibility at the rim. Good play by Evansville to get within a point. Reynolds off the mark, he'll try a few of them. Had made his only attempt entering this game tonight. Now the Purple Aces again, a chance to take the lead. Even down a couple of key players, they're hanging in tough against Cincinnati. Hughes, little hook shot for two, and Evansville has the lead again. House money. House money. Come on, the Aces are out here. I was going to say they're playing with the Purple Aces. <laughs> Come on. Victor Lockett's got to, if a guy's playing you on the side, you got to ride him up the lane. Thomas again attacks inside and cannot get the roll. So Cincinnati, Terry, doing exactly what you called for, attack, attack, attack. Some of those shots just aren't going down. Well, they got to keep going. In sheer numbers, they'll be able to make things happen. Cuff trying to back his way down on Skillings. And Lockett grabs the rebound. Under seven to go in the first half. Skip to Skillings. Too long. And out of bounds. It hits Toomey on the baseline. So it'll be Cincinnati possession when we come back. But how about the Evansville Purple Aces? Joshua Hughes. Good catch. When they came in and really took care of business, you got guys that execute on the high level, the high IQ players. So now they're coming in here to Fifth Third Arena. They're not intimidated at all. Not only are guys staying and you're getting guys, you're getting four-star recruits now. Terry. That's right. That one rolls in, and Cincinnati gets a bucket with Victor Lockin out of the media timeout. 
David Ragland told us it has been tough to establish a winning mentality when you've lost for so long. But his message to his guys is, do you hate losing bad enough to want to push to win? And so far this season, 10-2, and two, they've pushed to win. Good backdoor cut again. That's been there. And Gage Bogue plays it in. Seamoss, if you're going to get beat backdoor, you got to stop outscoring your man then. <laughs> yeah. if you're going to give up two, you got to yeah. score threes. You got to you got to just you got to get it back at least. Reynolds the hook for two. And I like the fact that Jamil Reynolds they threw the ball in there. Beautiful pass. But he's got to get deeper. If they're going to play behind him, push the guy underneath the basket and get as deep as you can and call for it as loud as you can. It's like a seesaw back and forth, back and forth. That's a wild shot. It ends with two. Joshua Hughes again. Footwork, timing. Evansville mastering it right now. Lockett almost gets undercut there by Bobe. Inside give to Reynolds again, knocked away by Hughes. And here comes Hafner. Cam Hafner off the mark. Yeah, Seamoss Lacocious, you got to throw it to where the hand is. Post players will always tell you where you want the ball. You got to make the right pass. I think that was a behind the back pass. <laughs> yeah, 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 it whatever. somehow found Lockin, and Cincinnati gets the deuce. You're very generous. It's knocked away maybe yeah, a little yeah. bit. <laughs> That's right. I tried to give him the benefit of the doubt. Active hands, though, for the Bearcats. For the Purple Aces, they're getting exactly what they want. There's no pressure on the basketball. I mean, if you're going to allow guys to sit out there and determine what they want to do right in front of you, I mean, it's going to be a hard time getting picked up at the YMCA if you can't stop guys that would just sit back there and let them run whatever they want. I mean, you hear about paint points. You hear about three-point shooting. I think Evansville should start tracking baseline points. They've got a number of excellent looks from there today. Thomas too short. Rebounded to me. They had a three on two perhaps, but instead they slow it up. Here's Cuff, the Salt Lake City Community College transfer. Hasn't played much the last couple of years. Inconsistent minutes at the community college level. Injuries, now playing a bunch at Evansville. And Toomey adds on to the Evansville lead. He's been hot in the first half. And he's yelling over at his bench, and the bench believes he's got something to say. As a post player, Victor Locken, Jamil Reynolds, you got to get deeper, you got to take over the game. 11 points for Yassine Toomey to lead all scorers. And a walk for John Newman. Evansville looks really, really good. Up by three over Cincinnati. Leader defensively, the cornerstone of your defense. Dan Skilling's got to get going. They got to play with more intensity. If the big guys are not going to take over the game, Victor Lockett, Jamil Reynolds, then the guards and the wing players must insert their dominance because this Evansville Aces team has got it going. Cuff with a bit of a height advantage here on James. Both guards, but Cuff at six foot seven just asserts his will and puts it in over Jizzle James. And that's supposed to be Odi Aguama's help right there, and he it didn't help. So having a rough early minutes for Odi Aguama. Aguama playing a few more minutes today with Bandego being out. That's a deflected shot. Kenny Strawbridge got a piece of that one. Evansville a chance to extend its five-point lead. Boy, you can hear a mosquito burp in London. It's so quiet in here. <laughs> <laughs> Again, another baseline cut. Strawbridge off the mark. That is one I've never heard, Terry, but I think I'm going to use that going forward. <laughs> James is stuffed by Toomey. He's doing it all. And he's got his fist balled up, too. He's loving it. Cincinnati just struggling to get anything going. Yeah, there's no movement. I mean, they're throwing the ball to Vic. Now, where's the cutters? There's nope. got to be somebody cutting off of the guy that's got the ball in the post. No points over the last two and a half minutes, and that's going to continue an offensive foul against Jizzle James. When that ball goes to Victor in the low post, Odi Aguama should flash up to the middle of the paint to pull his guy away from him so he can have a place to go. He's outside of the lane, both feet set, Tanner Cuff with the offensive charge, but just no movement on the Bearcats' offensive side. 6-0 run over the last two and a half minutes for Evansville. 
Here's Cuff. Better defensive matchup here against Newman. Still trying to work his way down. And he gets oh. it to go nonetheless. It's part, of that, it's part of that bench scoring, Terry, we highlighted earlier. Old man game, too. Plays in slow motion. Almost like you got to speed the reel up to watch the watch game film. But he's very effective. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. James fires away. Not that time. Wow. Skillings again leaping up. Cannot secure it. And Evansville basketball. But Dan Skillings is trying. He's out there giving you energy. They've got to find a way to move the basketball. But if teams are going to play you zone, which they're going to see this, every Big 12 team is watching this now. They're going to play some zone. They're going to try to stifle you. And if you don't get enough movement to move the defense, you got to screen zones. It's like you screen man. And you got to be able to score in certain situations. Oh, what a beautiful Look at post Cuff. move. Look at Tanner Cuff just single-handedly taking over. And Wes Miller finally calls the timeout. And you can hear the Bearcat crowd uneasy as the shot blocker on the team. Victor Locken last year, as far as shot blocking, had 46 blocks. This year he has 11. So he hasn't gone after the ball as nearly as much as he did last year. Doesn't have as many steals as he had last year. Defensively, he's just a different player with his effort. Good pass to the corner. Skillings knocks it in from three. And Beautiful that breaks offense. a four-minute scoring drought for Cincinnati. Beautiful offense. Oh, another spin move. Everything but the finish for Kenny Strawbridge. Cincinnati a chance to chip away a little bit. Wow, that's a funky play. Aguama cannot force it in. And a tie-up after that. That ball was right on the rim, and Aguama, all he had to do was push it down, yeah, but and it wouldn't go. How was that not offensive goal to me? Yeah, I mean, there's been a couple of those tonight. But. He's hanging on the rim as the ball. They don't try to rush it and kick it to somebody with one second. No, the guy with five seconds takes his time, goes to work, gives you a series of moves, and the Bearcats like they're stuck in mud, soprano style, like they've been pushed off the ocean somewhere, off a boat. Out of the timeout, Skillings could not get it to go. Reynolds' tip is off the mark. And with 42 seconds to go in the half, Evansville ball. A chance for two for one if they hurry. Cuff has been the hot hand over the last couple of minutes, and he's done it against multiple defenders. Look at that defense, though, right there. Dan Skillings gave you the best defensive effort on the block right there, trying to punch that ball away. Toomey can oh shoot my. that, makes another one. He has 13 points for the Purple Aces. I'm just wondering how is he making it. Is the rim bent? It's like one of those park rims because it's no arc on the shot. Well, they're hanging on the rims tonight. We've seen that, so maybe they are bent. Ten to shoot in the half for Cincinnati. Down by eight. Look at the offense. It's been four guys on one side of the floor. Off the mark for James. Strawbridge corrals the loose ball, and time is out in the first half. Evansville, 10 and 2 on the year, trying to win its fourth game in a row and off to a great start. 40 to 32, the halftime. Player, much better passer, much better defender. I guarantee you we'll see a better effort out of this Bearcats team in the second half. 86% from the floor for Toomey in that first half. They came in fourth in the conference in field goal percentage and living up to the billing. Evansville possession to begin the second half, up by eight in fifth third arena. They go right back to Toomey out of the intermission, and he goes right back to work. Yeah, you got to take something away. You can't let him back you all the way down there. Defensively, there's a lot more movement because they're playing offense as far as man to man. In three pointer by Seamus Lukosius. Seamus Lukosius, two of three from downtown tonight. He has made five of his last six over the last couple of games that he's played. Thomas trying to knife his way inside. He didn't get much going scoring-wise in that first half. And now Cincinnati doubles to me. And they throw it away. Steal for Thomas. Toomey flies in for the SWAT. The guy's doing everything for the Purple Aces. <laughs> oh, I love it. This young fella is out here putting on a show. Danny Thomas thought he had a smooth layup. He, just, he looked up at the rim and said, where did he come from? Came out of the Raptors like they're dropping Skyline gift cards or something. Terry, that's a reverse Vince Carter. He just went <laughs> over his shoulders with a block instead of a dunk. Yes, he did. It's going to make his highlight package. He's having quite the night. 
Thomas drills a three. Well, if they can't get any movement, then they're going to have to start knocking down threes. But more importantly, they're going to have to try to get some stops, string a couple together, because this Evansville team is just very comfortable right now, and the team can't be comfortable against your defense. Just like that, it is back to a four-point game with a couple of threes for Cincinnati going in. Good defense right there. That's a block for John Newman. Right through the wickets of Lockett, he recovers. Trying to work on Hughes. And puts it in. It's a two-point game. When the Bearcats play with the purpose, Dede Thomas got him going early. Dede got him going early. Dede Thomas, the Bearcats. But he's a guy that picks his spots. But sometimes, when I say this often about Dede Thomas, don't worry so much about running the offense, and at times you have to become the offense. You have to be the initiator and make sure your team either gets to the free throw line or get the shot they desire. Strawbridge is swallowed up down low. Lockin comes away with the loose ball. Evansville just called the timeout to try to regroup and can't get anything on the first offensive possession. Oh, we're... Skillings is blocked by Hughes. Out of bounds stays at that end. Yeah, Skillings tried to sneak to him baseline. Watch this play by Victor Lockett. Just a two-hand snuff. Cincinnati a chance to tie with a two, take the lead with a three. They came into the second half down by eight. Oh, you got to go to work right there. We call it block right there. But it's easy. The game is easy. Victor Lockett, you're going to ride him like a stallion. Throw the ball to him and let him go to work. They are small, they are undersized. And Victor, doesn't matter if the guy is his height, he is so skilled he can score on just about anyone, but he's got to determine in his mind that he's going to be the guy. Thomas, the good up fake. Extra pass to Skillings. Back to Lukosius. Here's some of that ball movement for Cincinnati, but it ends up as a turnover. Hafner had it knocked right into his hands. That's more of the offense that you were clamoring for in the first half for the Cincinnati, Terry, but leads to the turnover. Seventh turnover for the Bearcats. Strawbridge started the game so well, he's cooled off since. Tapped around by Hughes and into the hands of Day-Day Thomas. Yeah, the Bearcats got to push and get in the early offense. Skillings does just that, and it falls off the rim. Strawbridge leads the break for Evansville. Strawbridge is fouled. Yeah, Seamoth Lukosius, defensively, you got to stop the ball. You just can't keep backing up like you're doing the salsa or something. You got you to be able to stop the point that's coming at you. Closeouts, his hips are turning left and right. At the three-point line, they taught you this when you were in sixth grade and you were doing three-on-two, two-on-one drills. Stop the ball, and you force your teammates running back in defensive transition to fan out and take the wing players but you have to stop the ball and make them pass the ball at least twice in transition. If they pass at least twice in transition, that means that that's enough time for your defense to get back. Strawbridge had seven early points for Evansville. Those two free throws are his first points since. Well, Terry, one of your keys to the game was bob and weave, so <laughs> they are about dancing. So. Yeah, but there's no body blows. There's no <laughs> chin checks from the Bearcats. Like right now, the ball should be Vix catching the ball in the mid-range area. Now, where's the cutters? Instead outside, Skillings fires away, follows his miss, and a grab. They're going to get Skillings on following his shot. I'm not mad at Skillings because he's trying to make it happen. But when that ball goes in the paint to Victor Locke, and there's four perimeter players, and they're all standing, wanting to get the ball kicked out to him. You want to give Victor Lockin some space, obviously. But you have to cut and create angles for the defense. You have to shift the defense, or else you just let them sit in a pack line defensive set and getting hands and deflections over all the passes that are coming throughout the paint. Lockin was gifted that foul instead of Skillings. Good backdoor cut and poked away by Lukosius. Yeah, Lukosius has got to play more with his hands on his uh, on the offensive player. He's just uh, just too much space. You got to bump. You got to be tough and grab and hold. And you got to let the official tell you to stop holding. You have to cheat until they tell you not to do it anymore. It's only cheating if you get caught. It's only, that's my point. 
Buckner fires away. He's been pulled from three over the last couple of games, including tonight. Has not made a three in the last five games. I had a teammate, Terrence Gibson, that was a master at that. Oh. Lukosius, master at making the threes right now. Three of four from long range. And Simas Lukosius is so skilled as a passer. That's good defense right there, but the slap down by Josh Reed. Getting tangled up a little bit at the end of the play. Reed and Strawbridge with some words. Calmer heads prevail. Luko questions. Yeah, he's, he's very good. He has two questions back to back. Meanwhile, this Bearcats team is wrapped it up here in the second half, outscoring the Aces 11 to 4, shooting 50% in the second half, 4 of 8, 3 of 4 from the free throw line. Holding the Aces to one of five, 20%, zero of two from downtown. Evansville has not made a bucket over the last 345 of their last four. And they come out in a 1 3 1 at half, trying to give the Bearcats a different look. What's interesting with this defense is Toomey is the guy at the top, usually a post player, but they want that length at the top of that zone, deflected out of bounds there. But that's interesting, Terry. Usually you see the, the forward be the middle man, but they have Toomey actually being the guy up top. Yeah, how you beat a 1-3-1 one, one is you attack, you pass it from guard to guard, and when it goes from guard to guard, the angle is shifted. The guard who catches it now must attack the crease. They get that ball in the high post like John Newman did with the turnaround jump shot. But you have to move the ball from left to right as we are not at all up at 45. Cuff too short on his runner. Tries to save it, he does, and Thomas takes it away. Good bounce pass, extra pass, cuff off the mark. Got to get a deep outlet. Easy running for the Bearcats. Tied at 45. Thomas, he's a second half player, not that time. Fresh 20 for Cincinnati. Got to get the ball in the high post. Victor Lockett's got to call for it. Back to that stagnant nature again for Cincinnati. Now they get going. Newman on the drive. And it doesn't go, but a foul will call. Yeah, bring back the spirit of Danny Fortson. I remember watching Danny Fortson one time. They were playing, and Michael Horton was the point guard at the time. And Danny Fortson went up the floor four times and didn't touch the ball. The fifth time he got the rebound, and Michael Horton was calling for the ball. And Danny said, come get it, come get it. Michael said, no, give me the ball. He said, just come get it. And when he came over there, he stuffed it in his stomach, almost knocked the air out of him. And he said, if I don't touch the basketball on this next possession, I'm going to see you in the hallway during halftime. And he called his own number. He called 25, and he ran the play four times in a row. He looked at Bob Huggins. Michael Horton did. He said, you heard him, call 25. So they ran 25 four times in a row. He got two and ones and scored on every possession. And every time at the free throw line, as he scored, he's still talking and cussing under his breath from the plays he didn't touch four possessions ago. It's a different day of basketball back then. That's right, you gotta want it. Well, two free throws for Cincinnati. This is their first lead since the 5-17 mark of the first half when it was 29-28. And the crowd's back into it. Foul fighting through the screen goes against Josh Reed. The previous foul for Evansville was against Yassine Toomey. Josh Reed is a guy who hasn't shot it well. But one thing he does do is he defends well. He gets through picks, he fights, he busts through, just like John Newman. They're hoping that he can be a John Newman disciple. And John Newman, a guy that likes to fight through screens and takes on the tough challenges. Cincinnati looking for that other perimeter defender, whether it's Skillings, whether it's Reed. They need someone to help up Newman. Thomas gets stuck on the baseline. There's Calais, and now Strawbridge, four to shoot. Strawbridge, step back. That's, good That's defense. short. Shot clock violation. That's a good defensive set by the Cats, and the fans appreciate it. And they're letting them know. Cincinnati was down by eight. Now, in this one for one, once you pass it out of the, the, the top, from guard to guard, you must attack the angles. Just like there. Thomas flies in. The one through one tells you where to attack. You don't attack where the defense is, you attack where the gaps are. Cincinnati has gone from down 10 to up four, all in the span of not even seven minutes. J.D. Thomas is really riding defensively. 
Thomas, good blow by, challenges Newman. Tipped around into Lukosius. Here goes Newman with the lay-in. And John Newman out in the fast break reminds you of Stacy Augman back in the late, uh, early 90s out of UNLV. Tremendous left-hand finisher. Bearcats are back to life. Cuff finds Calais, and he could not lay it in. The coach and Jamil Reynolds. I mean, watch this. You're in transition. Throws it over. Day Day Thomas puts it up off the glass. And then Newman just jumps from outside the paint, cocks it back like he's going to dunk it. Uses the right arm to fend off, finger rolls with the left. Tremendous play by the captain. And now Sekou Kalei at the line. Six foot ten junior. Started his career at Akron. He's shooting free throws one handed. That's what you do when you're broken hand. Ryan Fletcher one time was in shoot around and he kept missing the dunk as you're doing the walkthrough. And Hugs told him if he misses another dunk, he's not going to play again. So Danny Fortson gave him the ball. And he dunked the ball. He turned around and punched the backboard and broke two knuckles. And I said, what are you doing? He just broke his hand. And Hugs said, go get taped up. Don't think you're going to get out of this game. He had to play with a thermometer on his hand. And he shot free throws with one hand. And he makes one of two. I've never seen that. You, well, you only need I, one to shoot anyway. Well, the sure. left hand is to make sure he doesn't bobble left or right. Correct, but that's something... That's what a shooting coach will tell you to do. You get next to the basket with one hand, and then every time you make it, you take a step back. I've never seen anybody do it in the game. That's something you see in horse. Yes. I don't know about horse. More like pig. No. Yeah, you won't last with horse. Shot like that. And he makes one of two. Five-point game. <laughs> Thomas. Oh. Denied by the rim. And Toomey gives it up. Thomas, the second try, but he's out of control, but a foul oh. call. Young fella just comes, he just, Day Day Thomas, he just parts like a red sea with a seal by Jamil Reynolds. He cocked it back, hit the front of the rim, got the ball back, and then got tripped and slapped from behind. And he's on the ground laughing, because he realized the rim is undefeated if you don't get over it. Wild sequence. We've had a few unique situations tonight. There's got to be some movement. Re-entry to Reynolds. Triple team on the big man. And yeah, a tie-up. I'm watching Jamil Reynolds post up. There's three defenders on him. Three defenders on him. And not one of the Bearcats cut to the basket. If the defender that's guarding you turns his head, if you can see the back of his head, you run right behind him and catch a layup. Evansville has gone ice cold in this second half. They get bailed out there on the missed three by Reed, but one of nine in the second half after shooting 58% in the first half. Well, the guys backing you in see Mazdakosius read his shoulders. Tough fall away for Cuff off the mark. Day Day Thomas, when he rebounds, he likes to push. But he gets stripped. Here goes Strawbridge with the left. Wild shot. It's a track meet in Cincinnati. Lukosius spots up. Buries the triple. Dan Skillings. Dan Skillings with the rebound. Comes out in transition. A left hand whip pass to the trailer in Seamoth Lukosius. And he rewards the pass with a knockdown three. Lukosius has gone mad. He is four of five from three. And he has made seven of his last eight. Tipped out of bounds and a foul called. Skillings the guilty party brings us to a break. What do you mean Skillings is guilty? Look at this 16 in the second half. The Purple Aces are one of 11 in the second half. All three from downtown, four of six from the free throw line. The Bearcats are pounding them on the glass, 33 to 19, with 13 of those on the offensive rebounding side. Out of the timeout, the skip to Bo. And he cannot take advantage of the open three. He has been a different player this year. Bob, he was great last season, especially in conference play, shooting the ball, but just 23% this year. Josh Reed gets in on the fun, and now the threes are raining in Cincinnati. That's good point guard play by Jizzle James. Gets the ball back from Josh Reed. 
fakes like he's going to go somewhere else, comes right back to Josh Reed as the defender sock, uh, slips back down into his defensive coverage, knocks it down. Giveaway here. Cincinnati up by 11. Down by eight at half. It has been a dramatically different second half. And Jizzle James earns a trip to the line. Well, I'll tell you, the break is real. You know, when I played, we had four days off. And when we came back, we had a five-hour practice. It was one of those things he wanted to have. Bob Huggins wanted to have a five-hour practice. So about two hours and 45 minutes into the practice, he says to the manager, call my wife, tell the slow cook the turkey. We're going to be here a while. And we restarted practice over. Layups on one side, you know, guards on one side, bigs on the other. Did the whole thing. Off the mark for James on the first free throw. Well, Big 12 men's basketball starts next week. Head over to Fifth Third Arena this season to see Wes Miller and the Bearcats in the inaugural Big 12 season. Lock in your tickets today by visiting gobearcats.com slash tickets or call 1-877-CATS-TICKS to get your season tickets today. Well, speaking of slow roasting things, our producer Trevor Tolteri, I don't know if you heard him earlier, slow roasted a entire roast for Christmas. It sounded what delicious. Roast? It was a pot roast. Not a pot roast. Uh, is, that, is, that a, is that a prime rib? A prime, prime rib. rib. Okay, you can cook, huh? Yeah, we didn't get invited, but that's okay. You know. The defense. Toomey gets stripped, but a foul called. I'm quite sure you had something to say. What did you have for dinner? What huh? didn't I have for dinner? Did you put, put any weight on? Oh, about five pounds. <laughs> Our director, Joe Back Brackman, was uh, trying to compete with Trevor. He cooked a pork tenderloin. Beef tenderloin, I'm sorry. I made my seafood gumbo. Ooh, yes, brother. Come on. Still got half a pot of it in my refrigerator in the garage. I had the highlight of the meal, I think. We had chicken marsala, we had roast pork. The highlight was about a 20 pound lasagna. At least it felt like 20 you pounds. You have it was no delicious. rhyme or reason of why you eat what you eat. You just uh, you just walk down the aisle at Kroger and look at stuff and pick it out and tell them to make this? We can't get into this conversation now, Terry. I mean, we last come on, don't tell minutes. me that everything is Italian. You just look at oh. any menu and all of a sudden start cooking stuff. We'll talk about this later. <laughs> come on. Trailer three for Cuff. Almost a wedgie and a rebound to Reynolds. <laughs> Skilling's on the break. He's electric. Throws it to Bo. Expected somebody to fill the lane. Nobody was there. Power outage. Evansville has not hit a shot from the floor over the last nine and a half minutes. They couldn't be stopped in the first half. Well, the energy from the Bearcats, they're talking on defense. They're opening up. They're helping down. And they're playing better post defense. And they're not getting the easy post ups. And this guy up top. Who was killing in the first half gets his shot blocked by a milli. You can hear as the DJ plays in the background, little Wayne, a milli. That's Jamil Reynolds with the block. Started his career at UCF, went to Temple for a year, and now his first year at Cincinnati missed the first nine games. Not scoring much today, Terry, just two of four from the field, four points but making his presence felt defensively there. Just be a big man. A big man is not always a score. A big man makes his presence felt. And right now, he, do, he doesn't really want the ball because he's not calling for it. So he's going to set screens, but he should be like right there. He's got deep post position. You got to look for him. And you got to cut. The Bearcats not cutting with purpose. James tries to lay it off to Reynolds. And out of bounds, off of Cuff. So with 2.5 seconds to go, watch the Bearcats look for this play where they run it around and they try to get a, a rim run, throw it at the rim for the dunk. The give to Reynolds, and he is blocked by Hughes. He's got to go up with the left. He went up soft with it. He went up soft with it. This is Division I basketball. Wes Miller calling for the foul, but Terry, those are the ones you're not going to get in Big 12 play. No, you got to go straight up. You gotta power up. You gotta shoot the jump hook over the outstretched hand. You can't try to put it in the defender's face. Evansville just needs to see a shot go in. Strawbridge muscles it up for two. Their first points in four minutes. Their first field goal over their last 13 tries.
Now, where's the movement? I mean, the five guys are standing. 12 to shoot. Not much going yet for Cincinnati. Reynolds lowers the shoulder. Skilling's the follow. Going downhill like Brad Doherty, old North Carolina Cleveland Cavaliers fame. Dan Skilling's two hands over the outstretched arms of all of the Purple Aces. Good pass. Hughes off the mark. Skilling's eight points, five oh, rebounds, no. adds to it here. No, it rolls off the rim. That's the million dollar move for the five cent finish. He was right there, Dan Skilling. Here's Cuff, hangs in the air, doesn't get it to go the first time. But perseverance pays off for Tanner Cuff. Great post defense by Jizzle James, but you gotta be able to secure that one. Cuff had a great first half, adding to it here with that bucket, now 10 points into double figures. Newman goes one way, then the other finds Reynolds. Next to go down low. Extra pass to find James. Toomey corrals the miss. Two on two for Evansville. Toomey has it roll off. And Hughes the long rebound. Look at Thomas. He's been a defensive wizard tonight. Hey, hey, Thomas, he's all over the place. Day Day Thomas, 45% from the field in the second half, 10 of 22, 5 of 9, 56% from three. And the blocks, 11 combined in this game. Yes. Evansville out blocking Cincinnati. So Cincinnati doing a lot of things right, but the blocks favoring the Purple Aces. But this game has totally flipped a script. Thomas throws that one away. Yeah, he threw a bullet scoop pass. Attack the basket. Get the ball to the rim. And let Vic get it off the rim. Evansville is two of its last 18. Give all the credit to Cincinnati for making shots in the second half, but got to criticize Evansville a little bit for not making some shots. The defense has been turned up for Cincinnati. Yeah, yeah we're and there's about another example. Behind the back pass. Oh, and the official called the foul. How can you possibly take away the Sports Center moment? I mean, look at this steal on the help defense behind the back whip. The run into, that's a play on, come on. You had a three on nothing, and you gave the defense the opportunity to take it. That's a take foul. The NBA, that's a free throw, and they get the ball back. Gotta let that one slide. Six and a half to go in the game. Anthony Mazzini and Terry Nelson with you. It's been a fun one. Almost an up high foul there. Lukosius got knocked in the face, but he could still see well enough to drill the three. He got knocked in the face, and then he just knocked one down in his face. Right back at you, ain't cheating. My partner, Corey Blunt, will tell you that one. Five of six. He has made eight of his last nine and looks well removed from that shoulder injury. But the activity defensively, Victor Locking says, I did not invite you into my house. <laughs> Get out of here. That has been the difference. Cincinnati has made the shots, sure. But Evansville has missed theirs, and Cincinnati has made life very difficult. And one. Victor Lockett is a load down there defensively. When he's active defensively, it opens everything up because the Bearcats are shooting the lanes and getting the basketball. And Day Day Thomas is having a heck of a second half, putting a lot of pressure on the guards of Evansville. And at once we were talking about how well Evansville was executing and how good they looked and how sluggish the Bearcats looked. And then you flip to the other side of the coin, you go to the halftime and the Bearcats came out and looking like they're trying to tune up for Big, Tail, Big 12 play and really come out in the second half looking sharp. Well, that's kind of what we were talking about as Lockin extends the Cincinnati lead to 14. Cincinnati's defense has done a fantastic job. But at the same time, the execution for Evansville has also not been there in the second half. 
Blocked by the underside of the backboard and out of bounds. Victor Locken stalking the paint like the predator in the jungle. Swiping balls that come around in there. <laughs> balls. <laughs> he goes in there being active around the rim. <laughs> Evansville has only scored 10 points in the second half. Cincinnati has scored 32. I mean, if you watch both of these teams practice, they will tell you that they look much better than what they're playing right now. It's John Newman the third. It's another three. But they look really active defensively. Tough wild pass. And Thomas picks it off. Newman stripped. Good defense to get back. That's Toomey. Now the three-point shot for Cincinnati, the difference maker in this game today, 11 of 23, 49%, 48%. Cincinnati, very good, like most teams, very good when you make a lot of threes, but Bearcats rely on it. And shooting from a high percentage again tonight. Walking off the side rim. We wanted that one. Thomas almost another steal. He almost got a free drink, too. I mean, he landed right in the laps of the expensive section. This is what we were just talking about. Greater than 35% from three, Cincinnati undefeated. Fewer than 25% from three, two and two. I mean, they're getting after it in the second half. They're playing with confidence, and they're playing almost angry because they can't believe that the Cincinnati faithful booed them off the floor in the first half. They came out, didn't like that, came out with more energy. The Bearcat faithful has rewarded them with applause. Made to shoot. Toomey has been great tonight. Nothing going recently because of Newman. He gets it back and he lays he it, it in. Back. But Newman is really taking on the challenge. I think Daddy Thomas is going to have to get some bobby pins or something to put in that hair to keep that headband on. 17 points tonight for Yassine Toomey. Season high is 20. Closing in on that mark. Lockin off the mark. Reed almost the strip and a late foul. Now Cincinnati at times has a tendency to commit too many fouls and they're kind of getting into a bit of a trend there. Foul on Reed on the reach. But a big Some may go in and out of the top 25. But I tell you what, this year, I say this, and I say it again and again, we got eight in the top 50. I believe 11 teams have an opportunity to go to the, the big dance this year. Now I saw Joe Lenardi release his bracketology, which I think is very premature. It's yeah. all for fans. It's all for yeah. overreacting. I mean, at this point, you can't tell who's going to be in, who's going to be out. He only had... I believe five Big 12 teams in the NCAA tournament field. It's a good thing he's not on the committee. He had Texas on the outside looking in, Stop the number it. 21 team in the country. Explain that one to me. And that's what I mean, that you can't feed in and buy that kind of stuff right away. Well, he was talking, maybe he was talking about he wasn't invited in the house during Christmas <laughs> break. On the outside looking in. Lockin gets blocked by Hughes. That shot altered as well. And Newman comes away with a loose ball. Fresh 20 for Cincinnati. Not enough, not enough movement for the Bearcats. Josh Reed, nothing but net. Who needs movement? When you can make the, the net move. Oh, the defense is stop. And then a reach at the end by Hafner. Now the wheels falling off for Evansville. Down by 17 and free throws coming for the Bearcats. All right, Terry, so Big 12 play coming up. New Year's Day right around the corner. What are your Cincinnati Big 12 New Year's resolutions for their first year in the conference? Well, I want the Bearcats to shine bright like a diamond. What am I talking about? Victor Locken, Dan Skillings, John Newman, Jamil Reynolds. These are your stars that's got to shine. I can even throw Day Day Thomas in there. You know, when the sun hits a diamond, it goes bling, bling. That's what it comes from. Shine like a diamond. Secondly, establish... And, and secondly, they have to uh, bring back Debo. Play physical out there defensively. Pump guys around. Push them. Physical. Make the refs have to step inside and tell you to stop grabbing and pushing sometimes. 
be the bully. And then lastly, they need Windex workers. They're doing it today. They need guys that will go out and clean the glass, establish an identity with your post players, even your wing players like Dan Skillings, who's tops, one of the top uh, rebounders in the Big 12. Hughes up for that rebound and rips it away from Lockin. <laughs> Wes Miller is down. And he's just grabbing his head and he's looking at Victor Lockin. And Victor is just like a, a dog when you put a piece of meat out there and he won't let go. And you're asking the dog to let go and he just will not let go. He gets a foul like that once a game. Victor Lockin where he doesn't get the rebound. And instead of him getting back on defense, he reaches and tries to grab the ball. And he just will not let go and get back on defense. Well, it's something Wes Miller has talked about, and we alluded to it a little while ago. He said, we need to stop fouling. We're putting teams at the line unnecessarily. He said, it boils down to consistency. We have a lot of guys that are very good and working very hard, but they have a lot of bad habits that need to break very quickly. Lukosius misses oh, oh, from three, and look at the rebound by Thomas. Oh, my. Seamoss at six, seven and a half at the top of the key can break you down, get into the paint and kick out for shooters. Last second heat for Lukosius off the mark and out of bounds off Lockett. Two hand rebounder. You gotta go up. It's one of the things that Odia Guam is good at being a two hand rebounder. You're gonna get John Newman back in the game. Or Seamoss Lukosius. They get a round of applause. Now Cincinnati stormed back in the second half. 2-0-1 to go in the game. But they were down by eight. Toomey has been great for the Purple Aces, but Lukosius erupted in the second half. 12 points and counting. How about Dan Skillings with the strip? Thought he had an easy one. He was going up to lay the ball up, possibly dunk it, but he jumped in the air and he had nothing in his hands. <laughs> Dan Skillings with the baseline strip. And then just toughness right there by Josh Reed. And on the possession, it favors Evansville. Cuff on the catch and shot. He knocks it in. He had an early, doing great early on. And they're going to come with a, what, a delay of game? Oh, they're going to send one of the fans home. It's the baseline of baseline. A fan on the baseline is being ejected. He knows who he is, too. He's right. I tell you what, you know, you pay money to get in those seats right there. And they pointed over to him. I don't know if the ejection will occur with 141, but they're going to keep an eye on him. Hopefully everything's good for the final minute and a half. You ever been ejected out of a game? Can't say that I have. Have you? Yes. As a fan or as a player? No, as a fan. Really? <laughs> oh, yes. Let's use this foul to talk about it. I was coaching my son's basketball game. It was like sixth grade. Out in, out in Dayton. And it was an official who never crossed the half court. He was making calls from the back, kind of walking, you know, sloppily put together, socks up to his knees, had a headband on. I mean, it's like some straight out of the movies, right? And I just got tired of him making calls under the basket when he hadn't crossed half court, because I do some officiating. I'm like, look, make it look good, at least cross half court. And he told me to be quiet and sit down. Shut up and sit down was his exact words. And I guess the Long Beach in me came out because mm. some words that put some combinations came together like Roy yeah. Jones. Watch what you're saying. We're live, Terry. That's what I'm saying. They, they came together. <laughs> they came together, man. It is, they flew out of my mouth. It was the most embarrassing moment for me because my children are there. Kids were there. I'm in the car. And the only thing I could say is let's go get something to eat. <laughs> Where'd you go? <laughs> I don't know, but I spent a lot of money. <laughs> I bet you did. <laughs> Just a bunch of kids. Boom. Off the mark from three. And out of bounds off of Evansville. Victor Lockett, 11 points, 8 rebounds to go along with 4 assists. 
5 of 13 from the floor. Not his most efficient night, but still shaping up to be a well-rounded evening all along. And foul against Strawbridge. Now Strawbridge started this game very well, as did the Purple Aces in general. Made his first three shots, seven points. We highlighted him at the beginning of the game. No Ben Humrick house today, the team's leading scorer at 16 a game. No Chuck Bailey, their four-star recruit, four-time freshman of the week in the Missouri Valley, including the past two weeks. 11 points per game. Humrick house, the two-time newcomer of the week. Top 10 in a number of different categories in the Missouri Valley. So we highlighted Strawbridge, knowing that he would have to take on a big load, and it looked like he would, but fell off in the second half. And you have to wonder, Terry, of course, you always say there's no excuses. It's D1 basketball. But they had an eight-point lead over Cincinnati without Humrick House and Bailey. How does this game shape up differently in the second half if those two guys were available in the second half? Well, I believe the Bearcats were still were going to respond. They were going to play sure. with different energy. Sure. Um, will they come back that quickly? Never know. But when Victor Locking showed up and when Day-Day Thomas turned their energy level up, they started hitting threes. The off the coaches really started getting it going. That kind of, it didn't matter what team was out there, it was going to be a different second half. But make no mistake, this Purple Aces team is going to win their share of basketball games. And for a team that's already been resurgent, first time winning double figure games in the last five seasons. Skillings puts a highlight jam to cap this one off. Oh, he had to get one in on the baseline. He took off with the intent to cause some damage. And he did just that. Well, it's only fair to note that Cincinnati was without Aziz Bandago and C.J. Frederick tonight. As Strawbridge puts that one in. So however you shape it up, this game would have been different if both teams were healthy. But in the end, Cincinnati comes back from down 10 down early in the second half to win it by 18 points. 76 to 58. And Cincinnati heads into Big 12 play 11 and 2.